Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. I'm your host Kyle, and I'm going to be talking about a movie that, I guess it came out a little while ago now, uh, but it will be going to streaming at some point, because it did seem like that was kind of the, the uh, by design, uh, <laughs> uh, it was produced by Apple, so we'll be going to a streaming service. It's uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, it's Martin Scorsese's latest picture, and it's actually, I was surprised to see, it was uh, the the most expensive R-rated film ever made. Um, it uh, actually beat the record set by The Matrix Revolutions, uh, this one being something like a $200 million uh, film, whereas, uh, yeah, Matrix Revolutions was 190 kind of surprising because i guess it 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 doesn't look i I hate to say it doesn't look like a like a 200 million dollar movie although it it's a western so it's i guess it's deceptive in that way uh well i did get into the story it's uh it's set well on a on a first nations reservation in uh in oklahoma during the the early 1900s um, the the sun is kind of setting on the the Osage people, their uh, uh, proud Native American tribe that uh, lament that their their way of life is changing, and they understand that within a few generations they will have been completely assimilated to a uh, white man's world. And that is until a vast quantity of oil is found right under their very feet, which brings in a a time of of great prosperity they couldn't ever have uh, imagined. But where there's money, of course, there'll always be evil men who are... uh, (laughs) who have it in their hearts to uh, try to take it. Now, um... At some time after this, uh, the Assage people have become extremely wealthy, and uh, returning from his uh, tour of duty in the Great War is a man named Ernest Buckhart, played by Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, he comes to live with his uncle, William King Hale, played by Robert De Niro, and Hale has engrossed himself to the, the Assage people and that community, uh, with his great acts of generosity and philanthropy. But there's duplicity in his motives, as he's kind of burrowed himself deep into their lives. And now the the wealthy native population begin to drop dead one by one, with Hale always seeming to benefit as a result. Now, Ernest himself, uh, who is a a petty thief and bandit, he becomes a a willing pawn in Hale's latest scheme, which sees um, Ernest encouraged by his uncle to to court a woman named Molly Kyle, played by Lily Gladstone. Uh, She's a young Osage woman whose mother and sisters lay claim to valuable oil fields. Now... The um the love between Ernest and Molly does seem genuine, and the two start a family together. But uh, for Ernest and Hale to gain the oil rights, uh, Molly, her family, and anyone else who stands in their way needs to disappear. And so the question is just how long can these uh these despicable men continue to practice? A pretty much a genocide <laughs> against uh, the Osage nation uh, unimpeded, being that they're kind of um, out of the way of law enforcement and the uh, the local law enforcement kind of turn a blind eye to what is happening. There's no investigation going on for these murders. Um, this movie, of course, directed by Martin Scorsese, uh, it's based on... Uh, journalist David Grand's non-fiction expose book, Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh, the story yeah, recounts in vivid detail the, the, the true life plot to eliminate dozens of Assage 
uh, people to obtain their oil claims. Um, something uh, in the way of 20 deaths are officially recognized, but uh, David Gran believes that something in the, in the vicinity of hundreds of people have been killed for um, basically to obtain the 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 oil rights that um, that they lay claim to. Um, the the murders, as I said, they're kind of a- they're aided by the blind eye of of local law enforcement, and so because of that, this actually became one of the first cases ever to be investigated by the newly formed uh, FBI. And so yeah, this uh, movie it started off as uh, a movie that was going to follow the investigation, but instead. Um, it takes a more um, distant view of that. Uh, the actual FBI investigation really only comes in in what I would consider to be the third act of the film. It's kind of tricky because uh, kind of tricky to say what is the third act of the film because uh, yeah, this is truly an epic and yeah, kind of surprisingly faithful recreation. Um, of events, uh, at, at least as far as we we know that they've happened. Um, I, I guess being a movie that's being um, produced by a streaming service like um, the uh, the Irishman, uh, well, Scorsese's just he's been given uh, the freedom to tell this story as, as thoroughly as he wanted to. Uh, yeah, just like uh, 2019's gangster film, The Irishman, um, this movie, it carries a, a, a three and a half hour runtime. Um, but with the exception of a few scenes later in the film uh, feeling kind of redundant, I I think that he actu- that Scorsese actually uses his time wisely. Uh, he, he methodically introduces us to the world of the Osage people, and then uh, into Hale's uh, conspiracy through the eyes, mainly, of uh, Ernest and Molly. Uh, the, this film, actually, it, it marks uh, Scorsese's first pairing together of his two favorite leading men, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, Robert De Niro. Um uh, both DiCaprio and De Niro have worked together several times uh, throughout their careers, but this is the first time that the two have worked together on a uh, Martin Scorsese film. And while uh, both of the actors are age-appropriate to each other, uh, I'd be lying if I said it didn't, they didn't feel a little bit old for the characters that they're portraying. Um, I, I believe they are actually... <laughs> Each of them are twice the age of the uh, the real life criminals that they're portraying. I think DiCaprio would probably be uh, older than the uh, the real um, the real life William King Hale was at the time <laughs> that this uh, that this um, monstrous uh, series of events occurred in in real life, uh, let alone De Niro, who's uh, pushing 80 now. Um, But, I mean, that said, uh, both of these actors, they both give uh, 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 the performance that we expect from actors of their caliber, and for De Niro in particular, uh, this may be the best effort that he's put in, in in well over a decade. I say that as somebody who did really enjoy The Irishman, but he is really good in this movie, I, I can't deny. Uh, but I think that uh, the actor that people will most be talking about here will be uh, Lily Gladstone, um, who delivers quite a, a nuanced uh, performance as the uh, the sickly Molly, um, as she's a, a diabetic uh, character, and... So her her days kind of seem numbered from the start based on the uh, the limitations of medicine at the time, and she's then kind of forced to to watch her loved ones being picked off one by one with no basically, and being told that ah, no, it's just just bad luck that all these people keep dying, <laughs> that all your family uh, keep dying one by one, and um, yeah, and, and it looks like you might be next. Uh, but 
And having said that, the relationship between her and Ernest is shown to be this mix of true love, but also um, really toxic, unimaginable uh, betrayal. And yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing to see. Like, Ernest does seem to love his wife, and yet he's deeply involved in this um, this scheme which involves him killing her, basically. Um, special mention, I think, also goes to the uh, the late, great Robbie Robertson from uh, The Band fame. Um, he provided the score for this film, and he's actually... Uh, he worked on a lot of other Martin Scorsese films. He... he he scored this film shortly before his death, and I mean, with with Scorsese's other films, they're generally known for their soundtracks more than their scoring. But um, yeah, Robbie Robertson's score here really shakes things up for sure, um, with kind of this tense, rhythmic, thumping score that I, I think somehow manages to keep the viewer on the edge of their seat despite the film's extensive runtime. And beyond that, the movie really is a beautiful um, film. Just how well it's been shot. It's... I don't... I'm trying to remember whether Scorsese has handled a western before, but it's a it's a different type of western, I guess. Uh, one that looks into the... the, uh, the a dark... Uh, time in uh, United States history and one that still needs to be uh, recognized. Like I said, this it, it it feels almost wrong to say that this movie could have about half an hour worth of stuff trimmed off of it because a lot of it did actually happen. I mean, I was surprised. I was really surprised after watching the movie just how close to real life this was. There are creative liberties taken here and there, but I was quite surprised by just how um, how close to the true story this 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 uh, film actually follows. But it, it, Killers of the Flower Moon won't be a film for everyone, but because well, kind of between its its oppressive runtime. And it's disturbing subject matter. Uh, that's uh, kind of two things that I might that I, I believe might put some people off of it. But it is uh, an extremely beautiful and well made and important film. And, and like I said, it's one that sheds light on many troubling moments uh, forgotten to in American history and crimes against its its first peoples. And this is all told by a, a master filmmaker who at age 80, is really at the top of his game and shows no sign of slowing down. So I'm going to give this 4 out of 5. I really did enjoy it. Uh, it might not be what I would consider Martin Scorsese's best, but, yeah, it is a it is a highly entertaining... Well, at times highly entertaining and uh, quite thought-provoking film. So I'd highly recommend it. You're listening to centralcoastradio.com and we'll be back right after this.